How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for more Golden Age Heroes. And since this is the 4th of July, we are going to be doing another patriotic superhero, if you couldn't tell by how I'm dressed. You know, this is supposed to be white and blue. Looks like it's coming up as two colors of blue. I don't know, I guess next to the blue it looks white. Anyways, we are going to be doing another patriotic superhero. I just do not wear hats in this video. Montage. Anyways, I thought that we would go ahead and cover Captain Courageous. Montage. Uh, for this patriotic superhero. Um, the interesting... Montage. What? You want a montage? Yes, I want a montage. So, what? You want me to do a montage of Captain Courageous and other superheroes fighting to the Stars and Stripes or forever again? No. No. You said you want a montage. I do want a montage. Okay. What do you want instead? America the Beautiful. <sighs> you want me... To do a montage video of Captain Courageous and other patriotic superheroes fighting Nazis to America the Beautiful? Oh, yes, please. <sighs> I, I don't even know how that's going to look. Okay, uh, we'll get back to that in just a second. The interesting thing about Captain Courageous is he has numbering issues when he first appears. We'll go ahead and get into that. It's weird how it starts off. He gets his own self-titled comic, but it comes off of the title that he appears in, and the number of his comic book follows the numbering of the comic book that he came off of. Now, that's actually quite a common thing for the Golden Age. A hero will start off on a different set of comic books, and it will become so famous that they'll change it to that name, but they won't restart the numbers. They'll continue from that one. I actually think, and I mentioned that when I covered the Blonde Phantom in Timely's Comic Books Top 20, how... They changed the comic book to her name, the Blonde Phantom, but they kept the number um, where they changed the format. I think it was from like six to seven. So they didn't restart the comic. They just followed her number and continued it from there. Now, Captain Courageous only does that for one issue. And then he gets moved over to Four Favorites, where a lot of the superheroes, when they were done from the original runs that they came from, came to Four Favorites so they can keep putting out um, comics of those heroes. Um, I, I don't know if their other runs were less popular. Anyways, to get back to this, we're going to be going over Captain Courageous. Now, an interesting thing about this, in the four favorite comics, he starts with number five. He is the superhero that he is supposed to be, that he appeared in, in the other ones. And I'm saying that in a very specific way, because after issue 21... He joins the Navy. Now, as he joins the Navy, he starts as a captain. And um, he doesn't show any more of his superpowers after he joins the Navy. I would have thought that a superhero on your team would have been a great asset. But he joins the Navy and he stops being a superpowered superhero. Now, one of the reasons I can see for the change is... This was about the time when people were not really reading superhero comic books anymore because the other superheroes that appeared with Captain Courageous are starting to get phased out. And number two, a lot of people were getting into the more realistic person grounded stories, but that's not what I tuned into Captain Courageous for. To be perfectly honest, I would have been fine for him to remain a superhero until his last issue in 28, because if I wanted to see a non-powered individual in the military fighting bad guys, I had a plethora of Golden Age comic books to choose from. So, it, it, it feels like a gigantic bait and switch. Now, I know in number 22, he, goes, he, jo he joins the Army or Navy and keeps his naval rank. 
and it goes all the way to issue 28, and then it ends. But it feels like a gigantic bait and switch. It was kind of like with Captain Valor, but with Captain Valor, we see him leave the military, and then he, he comes back. So with that, it was more believable. One of the interesting things is, in all the sites where I've looked up and did research for Captain Valor, they are Captain... <laughs> Freudian slip. Captain Courageous, they say that he is a supernatural entity that appeared when he was needed in the same way in the Unknown Soldier. I am going to totally say right now that that is completely incorrect. He is not a supernatural entity that is needed when people need courage. He appears in his civilian identity more than once in his first appearances and as I stated in issue 21, he puts on a Navy uniform and joins the Navy with no more superpowers. If he's a supernatural entity, one, he's not joining the Navy, and two, he's not going to become a regular person. So to every one of those research sites that says he's a supernatural entity, you are completely incorrect, and you need to alter your um, description of Captain Courageous or have somebody edit your pages. He's not a supernatural being, but he does have supernatural powers. No origin story. This has gone on for way too long. So, in regards to the montage, I'm going to be perfectly frank. Probably a good idea for you to remain Jesse. <sighs> I am doing this opener before I even started working on the montage, so I have no idea how this thing is going to look. So... I know this is a really long-winded opening. Let's go ahead and get started with this video and the review. I will show you why I think all these other sites are incorrect, calling them supernatural. We'll cover the numbering issue, the first issue, and we'll glance a little bit about him becoming a naval officer. So let's get this one started for the 4th of July. Okay, I forgot to mention this in the opener. Um, since we're starting this character with an eight, since we're starting this month with an ace comic book character, next week will be an ace comic book character too. So we're going to go ahead and make this eighth ace month. Now there are five weeks in this month. So I've got the first two characters from ace already lined up, but I don't have anybody lined up for the next three weeks. So if there's somebody from ace comic books that you'd like to see to fill out the month of July, let me know in the comment section and we'll include them as part of ace month. Let's get this one started and kick off ace month. Captain Courageous real name, unknown, first appeared in Banner Comics number 3 in 1941. The publisher is Ace Periodicals, and nobody is created with the creation. Now, the interesting thing about Banner Comics is they only put out three issues, number 3, 4, and 5. Now, obviously, Banner Comics was a lead-in under another name, but the uh, no other comic can be found with number one and two for what it's lead into. Um, after the first the, the first issues of Banner Comics, it goes into Captain Courageous number six. And Banner Comics is a lead into Captain Courageous, but he only has w one issue in number six. And then he would get moved over to four favorites for a number of issues. Now, in Everything that I've looked at, they say that Captain Courageous is a supernatural being who appeared to brave men and women asking for courage. Now, if something like this sounds familiar, then it, it does sound familiar because this is exactly the same thing as um, the Unknown Soldier, who is a physical manifestation of people needing, um, needing him, basically. I think that these people have been reading the comic books incorrectly and incorrectly misinterpreted uh, Captain Courageous because in his first issue, like you will see, he actually appears in a suit and is talking about a number of kids that he sees. No mention of him being the spirit of courage no mention of people calling for him. 
it it doesn't it doesn't fit. And even in um, issue twenty one, which is the last appearance of Captain Courageous in his costume, he joins the Navy and he no longer has superpowers after that. Now, where the powers went, it's not explained at all. It it is the same Captain Courageous. In fact, in the last issue, which I will cover, it shows them saying, you should join us. And then it even shows Captain Courageous in the Admiral, or not in the Admiral, in a Captain suit for the Navy. And it says that a new chapter for Captain Courageous has begun. So this wasn't a brand new feature taking the Captain Courageous name. This is actually Captain Courageous continuing in a super in a civilian identity as a captain in the Navy. But he does appear in a first couple of issues, not just in the outfit, but also in a civilian identity. So I think him being a supernatural being is completely incorrect. Now, Captain Courageous doesn't wear a traditional Stars and Stripes outfit like many, many, many other um, patriotic superheroes, which I've gone over a lot of them. So you can see how his outfit is different from others. Um, I mean, he's wearing the, the red and blue, but he's got like this star... Um, with a star pattern on the front and the star mask. So he does identify as a patriotic superhero, but not dressed traditionally. Not every patriotic superhero even dressed as an American flag. And someday in the future, I will cover some of those who have been identified as patriotic superheroes, but don't prescribe to the traditional... Um, traditional garb, I mean, Captain Battle, which I have covered. Um, his outfit wasn't very traditional. I mean, he did wear the blue shirt and a big white star, like uh, Captain America's shield. But Captain Courageous, not your typical cladded golden age patriotic superhero, but was a patriotic one. Okay, um, there's not too much outside of um, Captain Courageous on the outskirts. So let's go ahead and cover his first appearance. And then we'll briefly cover his sudden change in the entire format of the comic book in Four Favorites number 21. Um, you've seen the cover issues, how it goes, just starts with three. So, let's go over the first appearance. In Project Superpowers, Captain Courageous does have a little bit of a role. He is with the other Ace uh, Publication superheroes. They all appeared in together. And he seemed to be leading the uh, band of people when... The superheroes attack the Pentagon, the ace heroes show up, and Captain Courageous says, Fighting Yank, you're here. If I had any doubts before, they're gone now that, now that I see you. Wasn't trapping the heroes enough? Now you have to go after the president and the government? And um, he seems to be leading the charge on them. And you see this great fighting scene. With um, the Unknown Soldier, Lash Lightning, the Sword, Captain Courageous, Magno, and all of them. And then the young superheroes show up, and the ace heroes jump off with them. Now, they don't have much of a role after that. They start appearing in the All Heroes on Call battle, so... The battle at the Pentagon was their main point. Um, they all had some speaking lines, just so you know they were in the comic book. They were not the main characters in the main focal point. And they joined in with a bunch of the 
all the heroes battling the big bads together. And that was his role in Project Superpowers. And we start with the opening page. Captain Courageous in the air, waving at the airplanes. Mighty warrior. Master of Miraculous. Defender of Liberty, who enlisted his giant strength and courage in defense of his country, the United States of America. And... When we open up on the first page, this is why I say he's not a supernatural entity. He's he's here in a civilian form, in a suit and tie. I mean, I, I don't know what about this screams to people that he's supernatural. So, he seems to be overlooking some children and says, I hope these American kids know how well off they are. Hey, what's going on down there? Now... This is an odd thing for him to say. As far as we know, he's a patriotic superhero, and he's supposed to be American from what I can guess. So the fact that he said, I hope these American kids, seems like an odd thing for him to say, because as far as I know, he is American. All right. And um, he sees these kids making fun of this girl who... I was looking at her eyes. I thought she was blind at first, and that's why they're making fun of her. But I don't see any pupils in her eyes. But uh, apparently they're making fun of her because they believe that her dad is a spy, so they're picking on her. So our hero, because we find out at the end of this panel's he's called, he even refers to himself, you children should, should be in school. There now, just tell old Captain Courageous what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, most superheroes don't go out and do that. Of course, in the next issue, he displays his tremendous strength, and the people say, hey, you're Captain Courageous. Just and the fact that he does something spectacular. Okay, this is what she says right away. My name is Jonah Emery, and they put my daddy in jail. And mommy says he's innocent. I I don't have a problem with the way she said innocent. I have a problem that she's telling somebody that she just met that their dad isn't uh, with them in their home by themselves. So he sees the paper and then he says, and this, this is cringy. I don't even think it was appropriate in 1940. Here's a present, and I want you to be a brave girl. Where do you live? Oh, my God. No wonder there was nobody credited with this creation when you're making lines like that. Okay. Uh, she tells them where she lives, and they say that they're lonely without their dad. There's just so much wrong with this. Okay. You tell your mom to expect a visitor at midnight. <laughs> All right, well, they say that it is midnight, and what I can't understand is she says that her daughter has talked to her, and if she knows that Captain Courageous was on the way, why would she be in bed at midnight and not actually up and waiting on her? I mean, she wakes up from someone tapping on the window. Don't be frightened, Miss Emery. I've come to help you. Uh, you're a mysterious figure tapping on her window in the dead of night. She doesn't know who you are. Everything about this is completely wrong. Anyways, she tells Captain Courageous about her husband, and he goes over to the jail. Now, uh, it says that he's at John Emery's cell. One of the main problems I have with this is this guy appears to be in jail, and he's wearing a suit and tie. As far as I know, you don't get dressed up like that in jail. Now, it is possible that this is a courthouse jail, but they make no indications of that. So he bends the bars, goes into the jail cell to talk to him. I'm not making it up. Look at them. They're face to face in the jail. And then he leaves and bends the bar back. And then as he, um, he tells him that he worked at a, let's see... He mentions that he worked, let's see, there's a red-headed spy at the factory. He tried to bribe me, and when I wouldn't listen, they framed me to get rid of me. 
Why didn't you tell the police? Because they threatened to kill my wife and little girl if I did. So his family was threatened. So Captain Courageous goes to investigate even farther. Now, I like the little, um, I guess it's a sunrise scene. This is obviously taking a very long time. Hmm, sunrise. Something tells me that this is going to be a busy day. First, I'll look over the U.S. mystery bomber plant. Are you... Is this a speech bubble or a text bubble? There's not even a line to indicate whether you are saying it or thinking it. Okay. So he... Let's see. The mysterious bomber is ready for mass production. So... This is the 600 mile per hour mystery plane. What a weapon for defense uh, of defense for America. I, I had a problem with this at first. I didn't think that um, bombers. Uh, I thought the bombers actually flew faster than this. I thought that this thing wasn't, you know, I was like, well, I thought there were planes that moved faster in 1941. And, and yeah, there were planes that moved faster in 1941, but the fastest bomber in 1941, which I did look up for this, actually went at 319 miles per hour. So a 600 mile per hour bomber is pretty, um, pretty nice. Okay. Uh, oh, ho, there's the redheaded man John spoke about. And this guy is... It says he puts his plans under his wig, and then he spots Captain Courageous as he makes his exit while starting a fire. He, let's see, look, an acrobat. I saw him steal the plans. Get him. Now, I don't think Captain Courageous realizes that he has been set up for this yet. And we come to the scene where two cops are racing at him, and these text bubbles are completely out of order. I am, but he won't be hit. Listen, cops, quit trying to annoy me. I'm on your side. That's him. Plug him. Now, he says that he's trying to hit him before the cop even says plug him. Which, if that's what you're saying first, that needs to be above the other text bubbles. Because then you're speaking out of order and everybody looks crazy as hell. Okay, now the panels don't exactly flow real easily here we see captain courageous pick up this motorcycle and sidecar and put it on top of a roof um and then apparently he follows the guy to the skyscraper chicken farm which is the stupidest thing i've ever heard of but the way that the way that the uh, boxes are set up it, it doesn't flow real well. I mean, the last three panels at the bottom are fine, but the whole sequence doesn't flow naturally. You have to know where the next scene is to be able to follow it properly. Okay, so Captain Courageous sees that he's in a skyscraper and wants to have a look inside. Well, I'll be a Nazi's um, skyscraper army. Or a, yeah, he says a Nazi, a Nazi skyscraper army. And then he sees the red-headed man talking to a superior. And he says, lucky for you, or lucky for you, you did not fail. He says, lucky for you, you did not fail. They probably could have worded that better. So Captain Kratos goes, oh, so I'm an acrobat, huh? I, I don't know why he thought that he had to say that out loud. Okay. So he goes into the plant, and then look, here's a thought bubble. So apparently he doesn't have to say everything out loud. A catapult plane and a false wall. And he spotted a spy. Finish him. And it says that Captain Courageous picks up a plane wheel block and spears the bayonets. Now, first of all, you're not going to spear both bayonets with one wheel block and... If you look at the bayonets, there's multiple wheel blocks, but they said he only picked up one. They couldn't have said that he wheels, he, he throws wheel blocks at them, indicating more than one. Okay, so he starts to beat up the people. Ah, he's ruining the army. The army. I really hope your army's more than two people. So I have three problems with this page. 
First, the action is going out of the panels. I I know I've seen that a lot in the Golden Age. I don't like that. Keep your action relegated to the panel. If it if, if your scene is so big that it has to go outside of the panels, then scale it back and make it smaller. I know they're trying to show tremendous action, but it is really just unnerving seeing them go outside of the panels. Next, you have arrows leading you around the page because that's how confusingly they set up these panels that you need to be directed to follow it properly. Three to four, four to five. When you have to have arrows, you failed at storytelling. But... If that wasn't even so confusing, they numbered the panels that you're supposed to follow, which is bad in and of itself, but they numbered them wrong. The yellow box where he's getting sprayed with the X2 gas should be number one, but it's not number one until the panel next to it. And that's labeled one, three, four, five, six, and seven. So... The action on the pages, the numbering is wrong, the arrows to direct you around, I guess the numbering wasn't enough. Okay. So they spray him with this gas, and it knocks him unconscious, and they say he's going to dump him in the river? No, it says they're going to dump him in the ocean. So he's over the ocean, dumps Captain Courageous, and the cold air wakes him up. They say that the plan lands at a sanitarium, which is also known as an insane asylum. I guess sanitarium is just a better way of phrasing it. So, he's talking to his superior about the bomber plane. And the superior says, well, great, we're going to destroy the uh, plant and then start making our own planes so that they can get an advantage. He, let's see... I've got to arouse the air fleet alarm. Look who's down below. Just the boys I needed. And the last time we saw these guys, they had their uh, motorcycle and sidecar on top of a roof. Yet here they somehow are near the sanitarium. I don't know. I, I guess it could be possible that Captain Courageous has flown a far distance, but that's not the indication. So he talks to the boys and says that he's going to destroy the U.S. airport. Look, the bullets bounce off. So we know that he can fly. He's super strong and apparently invulnerable to a point. Now, he tells them that he's going to attack the airport. So they will call the airport and be on alert. Because the bombers at the sanitarium that there was a Nazi uh, front camp look like allied airplanes so they would be able to get the drop on them he flies over to the airport and i think it's the flight tower he grabs somebody of some rank and flies off with them let's see get out the plane follow them i hate to do this commander but i have to have the u.s planes chasing me um and then the guy's like, I'll have you court... He's going to say court martial. Hey, what planes are those coming towards us? Those are the Nazi planes to get us. We have to mark them so your men will know whom to attack. Now, it looks like he has a bucket of paint in his hand now, which he didn't have before. So he starts to, to mark the Nazi planes. And... The uh, One of them is just like, ah, he's ruining the attack. Captain Courageous returns to the U.S. squadron. Now, Commander, clean him up. I don't know who you are, sir, but you'll get a medal. Or you'll get some sort of medal for this. The order is, attack! And now that the Nazis have been identified, they start to fly back to where they were. But Captain Courageous comes out there and he swings the planes around in midair so they have to face the U.S. attack force. And there is a big dogfight and the U.S. seems to be winning, especially since they were alerted in time. 
Looks as if Uncle Sam Birdman are doing all right for themselves now to get John Emery and clean up that Nazi army. So he goes to Emery's jail cell and gets him out and lets him see his wife and kid for a minute and says, hey, I got some things I need to take care of real quick with the captain. So they go back over to the skyscraper and he lures the Nazis to come out. And here's another, here's another weird phrase. He goes, you stand here and bop them with this American baseball bat as they come out. He prefaces. He prefaces, prefaces, uh, he states that it's an American bat. It, it's, I, I, I thought he was supposed to be American. Anyways, he, got some, he gets Nazis to start coming out of the skyscraper, and Emery starts to beat him up along with uh, Captain Courageous. And then the police just happen to show up again. And they see that Captain Courageous is fighting the Nazis, and they decide to lend a hand. And then Captain Courageous says, I've got to take this uh, skyscraper apart. So he grabs the needle of it, and he says he's going to throw it in the Hudson River. And he says, must be careful not to hit Lady Liberty in the harbor. Now, I didn't think that Lady Liberty was in the Hudson, but I did look this up. She's actually pretty close, so... There would be a possibility if he didn't take care. So as he's dissing, uh, as he's throwing the top of the skyscraper away, a false wall comes out of the skyscraper and a plane shoots out. Not so fast, chum. I have business with you. Well, if it isn't the old friend Red Hair up to some more tricks. So he tells Red Hair that he's going to confess and he says, no, I'm not. So he grabs the plane and starts to aim it at the skyscraper. And at the last minute, he goes, no, I'll talk. Okay, so he gets the, the spy out of the plane. And the police tell Emery, hey, look, I know you helped us, but you got to go back to jail. Captain Courageous comes over with the spy and says, hey, this guy has something to say. Yeah, yeah, this man is innocent. I framed him to get him out of the way. So the next morning, Joan Emery, uh, John Emery's little Joan goes back to school and the boys and kids that were mean to her apologize and they say, hey, we're sorry. It looks like your old man was a hero after all. And high above them again, like where we started from. Well, that's two good deeds in one day. Teaching kids to be kind to each other. Yeah, that won't last. And cleaning out. A nest of rats from the U.S. Wait, wait. Two good deeds in one day? Uh, no, you cleaned out the, the rat's nest the day before. The kids being nice to each other is the next day. I mean, you may have done two good tasks within a 24-hour period, but this is clearly two different days. Okay, that's, that's the first um, appearance of Captain Courageous. <clears throat> Sorry. Captain Courageous, Banner Comics number three. Now, Captain Courageous would pretty much just go on to fight Nazis. Um, that, that's how his stories ended up working. Um, apparently in the next issue, he helps to secure independence for Newfoundland. Which, um, sometimes the patriotic superheroes did that. They would go in and in help a country that was like allied with the U.S. and all from the U.S. I, I mean, I think the Unknown Soldier helped out Britain in one of his issues. So it, helping out non-American countries did happen in some of these other patriotic superhero comics. So he does help uh, with the democracy of Newfoundland, and then it seems like he stays mainly in the U.S. mainly in the U.S. Now, he does have a couple of arch enemies, and let's see, um, there, there's an issue where he actually goes to Japan and finds himself helping out um, some jungle tr tribes to go after one of his arch enemies, but uh, mostly he sticks with the U.S., and he fights... Um, the Nazi armies. Uh, 
see uh, later in the series, as I mentioned with issue 21, he ends up joining the Navy and no longer has any more powers, which makes his storyline a little less compelling, which may have been one of the is reasons why he only lasted to issue 28. Actually, I think him becoming non-powered make made him last longer than the other super-powered heroes that were actually out at that point. And then the whole comic book turned into kind of a funnies, archy type thing, which it didn't last very much longer after that. I think that four favorites would end their run with number 32, so the whole format change didn't last very long. But uh, when he stopped using his powers, it was a little less compelling. If I wanted to see somebody in the armed forces with no superpowers at all, there's a number of comic books that I can read. So that sums up Captain Courageous. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope I didn't turn you off of this video. So uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it. And this is just the beginning of Ace Month.